Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the very long awaited video people have been asking me about. We are going to review and talk about the G6 and the 6.1 gloves, but it's going to be kind of a two-parter. So first of all, we're going to compare the G6 and the G5 to talk about the differences between these two to see the upgrades. And then we're going to compare these two and I'll talk about my experiences with these two and which one I like better and kind of dive into that. Yes, this video is really late, so one, I apologize for that, but it is kind of relevant because a lot of these changes that came with this glove is also on the 7. So the 7 will have a few different things on there, which, which hopefully I'll be able to talk about when they come out. But we will compare these two and it'll give you a decent idea if you're thinking about the 7 of kind of what to go with. And in the meantime, we'll talk about these two to see the changes that went between these two. Because as you can see just from right here, there was quite a bit. So for the 6.0, you can see hopefully on this just a bunch of changes right away on the face. You can see the cuff definitely looks smaller than what is on this one, as well as the pocket itself is considerably bigger. So you can see there is a lot more of this than what is there. That also means this palm piece as well feels smaller as well. So they really did a good job of trying to make this pocket look bigger and kind of the whole presentation of the glove to be less cuff and more catching area. And you can see that from just right here. Like look at the size difference in these two cuffs. You can really see how it definitely dives into the palm. Like this piece is already in the palm and this piece is not on the palm. It's still on the kind of cuff edge right here. It's very impressive how they changed that. Like look at that difference right there. That is very significant and it gives you a lot more of a catching area in there. So you're getting a lot more in here and less on the cuff itself. When you look at the side, you can also see a huge change on this cuff with how much thicker this one is. So you're getting more presentation to the shooter that way, as well as you are getting an overall stiffer piece. So that is extremely stiff where this one is softer so this one definitely feels a lot closer to what the, the 6.1 is because you can see how that kind of flexes in and this one is totally hard and solid right there so it goes all the way through here and when you kind of look at right here you can see that thicker piece as well so again you're getting more kind of coverage and this is going to point closer to the shooter so you get a should get more of that angle coverage as well as just cutting down the overall cuff size so awesome idea here and design there and it also shows a difference of here how much more this is compared to here, again, opening up that pocket. I've had people ask me over and over again of what socks I always recommend, and I've been using Cut Shield for a while now. I have multiple stuff for them. So Cut Shield is a company out of Canada that makes cut resistant socks, and these are their Pro Air 6, which means it's an ANSI level six for cut resistance on here. They also make pretty awesome slash guards and wrist guards. You see them in the NHL a lot. Basically look for this gray material under players' gloves and under their elbow pads. And it's probably cut shield. This version of it has an Evo shield piece in, so you have slash guard and it's skate cut resistant. This stuff is fantastic and I absolutely love it. I've been using it for a long time. Did a full review of it up there so you can check it out. But I now have a coupon code with cut shield. So if you want to support the channel, you can check out the link in the description to cut shield, buy some socks, which I think are honestly one of the better socks on the market. I absolutely love them. They're pretty thin and they are cut resistant and they're not too hot either. And I have no issues with these whatsoever on my custom skates where I need a really thin one. You can see how you can basically see my skin through them. So they are thin on here. And this part doesn't really feel or get that hot compared to some of those Kevlar socks. So I absolutely love this material. So check them out. I always recommend them. Use my coupon code. You get 25% off and it helps support the channel so I can keep making videos and making more content. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel without buying anything, check out links in the description to Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything through there comes again back into the channel so I can make more content and doing real reviews. So one thing they did change on here and I was kind of critical of this glove is how flat this finger piece feels. So it does have a slight curve to it, but it's very, very minimal as you can see where you get this one and it definitely does feel like it is a bit more rounded. So you can see it definitely feels like it has a bit more of a rounded shape overall to it. So that should help puck kind of funnel in there and go in there that way. And honestly, Warriors made a bunch of like small changes on this to really kind of dial this in. And I'm gonna say to make it, it's not a traditional glove, but it has some features on here that are more traditional than what this glove was. So, and they're really solid changes for that. Back end piece here has also been redesigned where you now have this extra like finger guard right here instead of this, you can kind of see the, how the bump was. So this is a lot more simplified than what that one was and we'll open this up to show everything off, but it is solid. I like this piece right here for the finger guard, very solid design having this like one extra little piece here. And it really simplified the back end here though. You can see how this was basically felt like it was like more pieces to it where this one just kind of curls over more is a longer piece, but it just feels like it is a lot more simple design than what this one was. And it still keeps that good closure 
as you can see, it's still covering everything you need without being really complicated because this one does feel like it's like one, two, three, even though these don't really flex apart from each other. It definitely felt like that. But this one definitely does have, as you can see, a more traditional type of shape to it compared to what this one was. Yes, you do get a bit more opening on there. If you really go in there, you could really jam where this one was like a pretty overall solid piece where that's like never getting in, but it is simplifying things. And technically it's kind of a step backwards, but it's good and it's fine and it works. So I'm not really complaining about it. The other thing too, is you can see how this one is a bit more open than what this one was. So there's the cuff piece to it where this one just kind of opened up a little bit here where this one wasn't quite open as much. Obviously the T's are different. That's a single T, double T. The double T is would be just the same as what is on this. But because they are different tees, I can't really compare these two in that sense, but it does give you a good idea of what the double versus the single tees end up looking like. So opening these up, well, I'll undo it and you can see how the whole backhand kind of opens. We have the same idea with the strap here. I just don't tuck that in there. I just leave it out like that. It's more accessible. And so it kind of just gives more flex to this. You have this piece right here, but has changed slightly. So that went in like that, where this one doesn't actually like disconnect like this it just stays on it so it's sewn into spot and it comes out like that and then that piece opens up like this as you can see it doesn't really go anymore you can flip this out though and that piece also kind of opens up like that and then this piece right here disconnects like this and then same thing with this where this piece also disconnects like that. So you can see the difference between these two pieces here. This one is a lot more kind of formed. It honestly feels like the same type of foam, but this one just is kind of folded over more so it kind of wraps a bit better. And when you get on the inside, you can see how similar the inside pieces are. There are a couple new straps that have been added and it is basically this piece right here. So this is the optional extra wrist piece. This can just be taken out. They have a little clip right here and a little clip right here. You undo that and this whole section all the way down here can be taken out. I kept it in there just for the extra kind of wrist strap so you can have that and tighten that part down so it acts as kind of one of those pull straps. It also adds a little thickness on here for a little bit more presentation where the old one had these kind of foam pieces right here that you could add in. As you can see, that's kind of gone, but that is kind of what this piece does as well. So you can add that in there. So one nice upgrade on the G6 compared to the five. So this top piece right here that you can tighten for your backhand and has a strap that you could pull out if you want to, but it has this nylon backing, which isn't an awful material, but it's honestly nothing special and it's, it's nothing amazing. On this back here, it is now a more plush Nash. So it's the same material that the palm is and it is thicker overall. And honestly, it feels really nice on your wrist compared to what this one was. This one was pretty thin, kind of soft, but it wasn't like plush and really, really nice. So this one right here is a nice improvement. And since I talked about this removable piece, I'm gonna show it off here and it is removable on both, but this will also show you the inner palms a little bit better as well. So how you undo this, there's this little snap right here. You undo it and you just honestly pull it out. It's kind of a pain. So it might go out of focus on this camera. And then it comes out of this piece right here. And you can see if you really want to, you could just take this out. So you have this extra piece in there. And then we also have to take this side out as well. And then this strap right here comes out like that. And then you just un Velcro this out and then put this down. So that ends up being what the normal palm is. Then you kind of get this piece right here, Velcro's in, so you get a bit more thick padding on that piece. And again, you could take this piece out all the way if you wanted to, so just have this without that strap in it. In fact, I'm gonna do that. So it would just be like this, and you can put it in here if you want that little extra coverage without that quick adjustment piece there. The actual liners, both of these are 75 degree, as you can see are pretty similar and they feel pretty similar. There might be some slight changes. I never took them out. Both of these ones are removable, but like I said, I'd never took them out. I actually just used this one. I lined it up once to make sure it felt fine and then kept it in there and never changed it. But this one is kind of interesting with this new material right here because you can see how this piece folds out. This one never really did, but if you really pulled it, it would plop out like this. So you can kind of see the different how these pieces are designed and how much more simpler this one is 
and compared to what this one was. So a lot more easier manufacturing it feels like as well as like less pieces just overall. So maybe it's cheaper, but this design works really well. And this is that hard foam that we saw everywhere. I'm pretty sure it's probably the similar foam that's in here. It just no longer has a liner on it to kind of hide it. But you can see how these gloves are very, very similar from each other. And same with the like palms. I'm pretty sure these palms are interchangeable. So you can use a five on a six or a six on a five if you need a new one on an old one. But that is how it is. And you have all the same things, finger pieces right here. And everything on here is pretty much the same. So there's nothing crazy going on with these two to make them really that different from each other from an internal standpoint. So really there's not a ton going on in the backhand and stuff besides kind of the new shape. For closure on these, that is, you can see it closes very nice right here, like totally flush and a little gap there, but very, very flush overall. Where this one, kind of very flush there and not so much there. So there are obviously changes on that as well. You can still get this, you can hear it, kind of snap that closure and it's that material kind of hitting there. And it's an interesting sound that you really only hear on Warrior gloves. I haven't really heard that way on really any other gloves. So the one thing about this though, and it feels very different is when you're closing this, this felt like it was kind of on a hinge. So when I would go like this and you can kind of almost see how that piece is going under this little middle sty right here. And I can feel that closure point kind of like this piece kind of digging into my hands more and it closes it honestly feels like it closes a little bit better. It feels a lot more like an oven mitt and it kind of looks like an oven mitt too when closing and it feels like it closes slightly more and it's all more totally flat and secure there where this one, when I'm closing it, it feels a lot more like a glove. It feels like there's a lot more padding in there and it feels like there's a lot more in here in general. And I noticed that for protection as well. This glove, I definitely felt shots on. I did tests with those junior A and junior B kids and two summers ago with this one and i actually felt shots in here a decent amount to the point where i really wish warrior kind of beefed up the palm in here they were supposed to have practice palm insert foams i bought all the liners for these to test out the different break angles which i did the whole thing on and i never got one of those in them i felt shots on this quite a bit to be honest and i was kind of surprised because people always say how great protection is on these this thing is night and day different this thing is so much better and it feels so much beefier and so much more protective it feels very 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 solid with that said because it feels more protective you do definitely lose some of that feeling of closure like i said you could feel that kind of break angle a lot more like well this specifically you can feel this part a lot more closing and it was a little bit easier to close but this one still closes like pretty good. It's a, just a huge improvement overall. So Warrior did a lot on here, not just to make the catching area better, but to make the protection on it better as well. And just everything about this glove is a huge improvement over this. You can just see kind of like how closed off that is compared to this one. The pocket looks way bigger. The shape kind of looks more, I'm not gonna say natural, but it looks more like other gloves do. Now going from the G6 to the 6.1, and we see some other changes as well. Now, obviously Warrior has documented this quite a bit in terms of like they have a ton of diagrams trying to explain this and everything. I'm going to kind of go over them and what I notice when using them as well. You can see the cuffs kind of look pretty similar in terms of overall size on here. This one does look a little bit longer than what this one is, but it looks pretty close overall. And when you put them kind of side by side to each other, you can see that it is a little bit longer overall, but it's still pretty close to it. The other part, when you kind of just look at it like this, this thumb really does look like it kind of dives into the pocket more, where this one does look a little bit flatter. And it's kind of what I've noticed when using them as well, is that this one kind of was more of a steep overall feeling. You'll also kind of see how much longer this piece is. So you can see there's a lot more material here than what is on here. And that is again, that pocket shape. And then when we get on the cuff right here, cause it will also show a difference. This looks kind of similar from this sense, but whenever I use them and you kind of see it like this as well, the G6 always felt like it was a little bit bigger, but it's really not, as you can see, it's both the same. The interesting part is the G6, we talked about how stiff that was right here, but then we go to the 6.1 and you can see, like there is one of the differences how when you look at straight on, this one you can see kind of the nylon here, where this one, it just has more of this. Kind of look the same when I'm watching this on camera, but when you see it in person, this one is definitely thicker than what is on this one, or it looks and feels like it. Like it on this view, it doesn't look like it, but it is when you actually hold it. I mean, the other thing is you can see how this one kind of can push in. 
this one you can't at all. So this, something here makes this a bit softer than what is on this one. So this one overall is more stiff than what this one is. And I feel like that's kind of the thickness coming into play here where this piece just feels like it's slightly thicker overall than what this one is. And even though those thumbs are very different between each other, when you look at them like this, they kind of all look like they're pretty close ending up. Like these parts all look very close to each other. This part looks like it's slightly longer. And when you put them in this shape, you can see the similarities between the two. Like all these look pretty similar to each other and there's not a ton of differences. But the real differences are obviously in this palm piece. So when we look right here, compared to right here, you can see, well, I think you can kind of see the pretty big difference between these two. And that is just overall this entire shape right here so this piece right here is longer than what this piece is and when we take the actual measurement out we can see the end of this is about 17 and a half centimeters for the top of this piece and when we go here and it's basically going to the sty so it's not totally accurate because it's the sty is part of that palm but you can see this one is like basically 18 and a half centimeters to the tip of it so you do have that longer shape right here compared to this one. So that's where they're talking about this piece is being longer overall, where this one has, I think, I believe up here is a bit longer and you can kind of really hopefully see that, but this bottom piece definitely feels like it's a lot bigger than what is down here. Going on to the backhand, it's gonna be kind of the same. Overall, everything here is like really similar to each other. Maybe there is some a little bit longer pieces just to kind of fill out that palm area, but everything is pretty, pretty similar to each other and the whole design is very, very consistent. Including on the backhand where these pieces are all pretty, consistent as well it's basically the exact same backhand design and i have the same kind of options on there too with that removable strap which i suggest everyone keeps and orders and custom because you can just take it out so you get that extra kind of padded piece or you just take it out if you don't want it altogether. so you can make your total choice on that and if you really wanted you could probably take this part out as well so you just get that extra padded piece without all the extra kind of pull cords in there i should call out in here as well before we get out of here this is very similar to what was on the G5, but I'm gonna talk about it anyways. This piece is all adjustable, so you can change where this piece all sits around. So if you want this to be crazy tight and pulled in, you can. You have two adjustment pieces here, here, and this is also on the six as well, before I forget to mention that. So you can kind of figure out how you like this piece and how it's adjusted, and you can kind of get this lined up exactly where you want it, and you can do that as tight as you want either side and leave it there. And that way you have kind of, that really locks in that top piece any way you like it. I think this one little strap is a little too big. I hate how it kind of, you have to push it all the way down like that, but it's not that bad and it works to lock your hand in place so it doesn't really get go anywhere from here. I overall like this piece kind of to be more loose. I don't love super tightness right there. I like my fingers to be decently tight and that to be the most controlling part of the glove. But so like right back here, I don't love it to be extremely tight. So the big difference between this glove which is the 6.1 and the six, is that this palm is not removable. So this piece right here can go up, so you can put that in there, but you can see this doesn't Velcro out and it is sewn into the palm. So this is a huge, I think, change and something I'm a huge fan of. Originally, Warrior was gonna do removable on both. So this one was removable and then the six one was removable and I think they're having some manufacturing issues. So they ended up going just, this one was sewn in and the other one was removable. Cause originally I was gonna order that one sewn in, this one removable, the opposite of what is stock for their kind of lineup and what stores would carry. Cause I like to be difficult. But in all honesty, this one isn't removable. So this palm won't come out. You can select your different liners on it. So I selected a 675 to a 75 to show the difference in closure because I've talked about these liners before and how much I think they do. I wanted to show that even though this is a 75, it doesn't close like a 75 and it feels totally different. That also leads to one other thing that's kind of different and that is over here, you have your thumb piece right here. So the tie for the thumb is over here. When on this one, it's actually inside here because this thumb is removable. You can see the little piece right down here. It's in here, it doesn't come out here. So it's actually just kind of shoved inside because it comes with the removable palm itself. So kind of interesting different piece there on that. And overall, you can kind of just see how this one is sewn in. I'm a big fan of this being sewn in because I feel like it gives you a bit more stability in the fingers. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well when I talk about the actual performance of these two. But that is the big differences between these two. You can see sewn in versus removable. And this piece right here is on both of them and you can see how that works. And just to kind of put this one back in here to give you an idea of what I'm gonna do with it. 
You can just shove it back in there so you get a bit extra kind of padding in there so it's a bit taller and pushes your glove a little bit forward. But I don't really need that quick release strap because I don't use it anyways. So I'm gonna leave that in there and then pull this over, kind of fold that in there and then we put this back all together and we'll talk about closure and performance and everything like that. One thing I didn't notice on these cuffs is that they are kind of small for what you expect. I have that Warrior X4 Pro Plus chest and it is massive on the arms. And these, honestly, you think they would not get in the way enough. I did notice that these got in the way a little bit. So it wasn't the best and most ideal thing, especially with the the gloves when you do kind of like an out position like this it's not that bad but when you go the fingers up this definitely you can even see it just hitting my hand like that with you have a chest on that's going to get in the way so that is not the best idea and design here and i believe they open this up on the seven so it would be nice to kind of open this a bit more because you're doing that fingers up it's already touching my skin and a chest protector is going to make that worse and same with this if you're doing it on the side totally fine you turn that up a bit it's a bit more open but it still gets in the way of that chest. Small change I think Warrior could make, and I believe they're already making it. So we'll show the two closures of these side by side, and closing this, it closes like that. Now, people always talk about finger breaks and everything. Here's the thing with Warrior gloves, and I talked about this with a few other gloves. You can do it any way you want. So if I'm doing like this, it's kind of a 590 closure. It closes like that. It doesn't feel that natural, and my other fingers right here don't feel that natural, but you can close it like that because the glove closes so well, but it doesn't feel like that's how it should close. That break doesn't feel like it's supposed to go down there. If you do this, closes a lot better, and it feels a lot more natural. Now, if you do kind of this, it still does it, but it doesn't feel as natural, and it takes more force. So really, this is kind of the one that feels like it's more natural for this, and that is how I like closing this and everything. Yeah, if you do the full hand one, you can do it, but it just doesn't feel as good. That one is the one that feels the best, not that and not this. But again, the glove closes so easy that you can really get it to do any way you want and it will kind of work for you. But the break angle is really kind of that 45, 75. And then when we get to this glove, it closes like this. Now, this glove, it doesn't really have that snapping sound. You can kind of make it but it doesn't really feel like it wants to and it's all that natural. And this break angle feels totally different than what is on this one, but because it's a warrior glove and the closure itself is pretty solid as you can see, and the T closure on this is honestly a little bit better than what is on that one for just well, my version specifically. If I do this like this, it closes really easily and it feels really natural. If I close like this, it doesn't feel that natural. It definitely feels like I'm fighting against this palm. I want to close like that and it's just not, doing it, you, again, you can close it because it's a warrior, but that's how it feels. And then like this, it feels honestly kind of the worst overall. <laughs> All right, so for break angles, everyone wants this glove to be a 580. Personally, I feel like it plays more like a 590 than it does a 580 style. Warrior says it kind of lines up more with their old GT lines than it does with a different like 580 style thing. Now, here's what I want to call out. This glove can close in any way, shape, form you want it to. I showed that off, it's so easy. If you wanna do fingertips, it does that. If you wanna do full hand, it does that. If you wanna do like this, it does that. Because of how easy Warrior gloves close, they can do it any way you want. I talked about a few gloves like that. That is definitely one of them. When you look at these side by side, you can see some similarities to them. And this is obviously a 580. And that is kind of where this pocket ends up sitting and starting right there. And kind of the overall like pocket area. The difference is I find when you close this, that T folding over makes such a difference and just how this overall closure is, like right here, just feels so unique compared to everything else that I really feel like this glove isn't as close to this one. Because when we close this one, look at the T. The T is not doing that crazy fold over piece and I feel like you can watch the bottom part when you do that, see how the fingers kind of punch out. That would feel more like a 580 to me where it really feels closer to this in terms of overall closure. Just have a normal closure there and same with this. So these two feel to me like they're a closer overall break angle and kind of style. Even though this palm, you can see how this one's a bit more flat here and this one kind of dives in a little bit more. Thumb right here looks pretty similar to what the 580 is. But overall, I feel like this glove to me plays like more a 590 than what a 580 is. So to me, it's more of a 60 degree than the 90 degree people are always talking about. But again, because this thing closes so easily, if you feel like it feels like a 580, that's great. If you feel like it feels like a 600, it's great. If you feel like it feels like a 590, that's great as well. For me, I just knows it plays closest to what this is. And I also feel like when you close that and you bend it and you can see the fingers move, that is a really good example of how it doesn't really close like that 580 does and it's more natural to close like that one.
So protection on these gloves was both very similar and very good. I talked about this one compared to the G5. This one was the same way for that. So it was a solid beef up compared to the G5. And honestly, I usually order pro palms and gloves. This one feels like it might be slightly under some pro palms I've used, but it's solid and I wouldn't really change anything there. And I'm a big fan of how good that is. Maybe if Warrior could offer options for beef up, so you just have a little bit thicker foams throughout there, maybe that would be nice, especially on the replaceable ones. And you could just kind of keep going that forward. So you could just buy a beefier one if you wanted to. Kind of like what Maxon does on that heretic glove I showed off. Overall, I was pretty satisfied with it and don't really have any issues with protection on it. And it does a pretty good job. So for puck seal and picking gloves up, this one, totally fine. As you can see, picking up, totally fine. Works really well. I feel like Warrior's been good with this for a while now. And they're super easy to pick up. And the T is super easy to use. And there's no gaps or anything. And then we go to this one. Same thing. I find this glove a little bit harder to pick up just because the T feels like it's further apart. I don't know if that's a split T or what. I mean, I can and I could do it there, but this one just doesn't feel quite as easy as the six does, but it's close enough and it's good enough and it does its job anyways. Now for weight and balance, again, I don't weigh these because I feel like people are too worried about numbers. These gloves feel very light overall and are really well balanced. There are no issues like on the recent CCM gloves where it's too tip heavy because there's no plastic. This one, honestly, weight feels really good there. And this part actually feels very light on this side of it. So it feels really good and really mobile and movable like that. Now less weight here means it might tip a bit more, but I find it to be pretty good overall and not a ton of issues. And same with this one where the weight is nicely centered over here and everything over here is honestly pretty light and the glove is well balanced and pretty light overall. So one thing I want to talk about too is stiffness, which is kind of, we talked about the cuffs already, but the thumb you can see is also really solid. I have seen this recently where you could really bend cuffs in half. All this piece is molded plastic in here is solid and does a good job on here. You can see this glove opening up a lot in the slow-mo for the 100 puck challenge I did, which you can see up there, but you could see them opening up. It does its job and it's doing a pretty good job overall and the plastics in here are stiff enough and do like a good enough job compared to some other companies. Both of these tees are also pretty solid. So they do feel like they have double plastic inserts in them. You can see the plastic insert here and you can kind of see on the other side and it feels like that on kind of both of them. And when you kind of push in, you can see it doesn't fold all the way out. When you do see this in the Hunter Puck Challenge, you can see this open up a lot and kind of go like that. And then this glove is very evident of the puck marks here and did a good job of not like folding over and collapsing in on itself. The tee is really solid. You can see like that. It doesn't fold over you can if you really go hard and push it in but it naturally doesn't want to go that far we've seen that in some companies where that is an issue overall i usually order like a stiffer t pocket so they don't kind of collapse in like this this one you don't really need to with how this whole shape is it does a pretty good job of holding its shape not perfect closure on that one like i talked about before but overall does a pretty good job of holding everything now for catching this is what kind of blew my mind i expected to come in here and love this glove or at least enjoy it i wasn't a huge fan of the g5 just because of like the finger shape and stuff and i still think that could be a bit improved on this but it's definitely improved over the previous one but i expected me to enjoy this glove a lot more main used one because it is that 75 degree which is also like the 45 55 which i love so much and kind of the 600 style it's more similar to that you go to this one and this is not what i like to be honest yes i'm using a few right now with the hyperlight 2 and the px3 which is more similar to this, but I have found, even though I find this glove kind of awkward to play with, this break is not natural to me. It doesn't feel the most natural thing, and it's just not my favorite thing overall. This one feels a lot more natural. This thumb shape and everything, kind of how angled that is, and how I feel like the pocket is really big, I catch more with this glove than I do this glove. Now, something I found kind of interesting is I catch more of this glove right here. So I found in games and stuff, if it comes here, I manage to catch this and squeeze this right here more than what I do on this one. Whereas this one, I feel like I have a harder time getting this closed soon enough. It almost just feels like there's a bigger distance here to close, even though you do have that piece that's obviously it just, it closes, but I feel like there's a bigger distance cover here. So when you end up closing, it just takes a while to get fully closed. When this one, it just takes less effort and not even effort it just takes less of a distance so i snag more here than i do on this one where i find that they kind of run out a bit more and i have a harder time getting this sealed up all the way now with that said actually catching shots that aren't right here i catch a lot more in this one especially in the pocket than i do with this one which was something that really blew me away now 
I don't think it's the fact that this is a double T when we did the hunter puck challenge. Gateways really seem to kill pucks that came out of this. So the pucks that hit this one had a lot more spin on it and kind of popped out more. And it's one of the first times I noticed a big difference between nylon really and skate lace is in that video because you could really see the spin kind of coming off this and popping out where this one, it would hit and it would just die more. So I don't know if that is the single T there kind of working with that or just the flexibility and kind of stretchability of the skate lace because this one doesn't really have that. You can see it doesn't really move all that much. So interesting that I noticed that when using it for catching in games and everything though, this one just felt like I could catch more with it. I don't know if it's just the hand position that I end up using and puck just happened to go in there or, but this one, I ended up catching more with it. And this one is my favorite over the two. And I'll use this one more often than I use that one, which was something totally surprising and kind of blew me out of the water for that. Interesting that that was the case. I never expected it. It's definitely not my preferred shape. It's not my preferred closure, but it works for me a little bit better than what this one does. But honestly, I don't catch fantastic fantastic with either of these gloves. I know there's some other gloves I definitely catch better with. They're just not my favorite. I don't catch that amazingly with, but honestly, I'm adding that to more of a bit of a me issue because it's not really the fact that like the pockets are too small now because they changed that. There is more slope here. It's just, I have to take a while to adjust the gloves. These gloves are so unique compared to everything else that me switching back and forth really does hinder the overall performance for them. Four pucks kind of bouncing out. I was critical about this in the past with Warrior Gloves and I still notice it on spots, but you're gonna notice that. The thumb on here, I notice it a lot more on here. I hit this, it kind of feels like it pops out a bit. And then on here as well, anything kind of hits down here, I notice it pops out and I have a hard time squeezing with it. The cuff is gonna be a cuff, it's gonna happen anyways. I do notice this one, things on here kind of end up going in more. And even though in the testing, this one, it felt like more on here went in the pocket. When I'm actually playing, I just find like I have a harder ability to catch with this glove overall. So pucks kind of bounce off it a bit more. The T is fantastic though. You saw that in the testing. Anything kind of hits in here, stays in here. But anything on here, I have a bit more problems than other gloves do. One, I think that is partially to the slope. Yes, it is sloped a little bit more, but it is still pretty flat overall. Even though this one, I feel like they are like making solid changes into this. I still feel like this one is a little flatter than I'd wish. And I do find some of these don't work that well for me in games where this one, it less thumb there so it kind of works a bit better for that but things that hit this thumb don't always necessarily slide back in there and again you could have a bit more of a sloped finger piece in there kind of help slope that in but this is better than what it used to be so it's a solid change in that sense core tech which are core shorts and people have heard of these before they were labeled under under armor before now bauer sells hockey specific one but core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel basically this stuff helps you with growing strains growing pulls and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that and speaking of injuries i kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these cortec shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse when i don't wear them i can feel it and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured so these have been a huge savior for me check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and i'll put it on the screen here it helps support myself and the channel so i can make content and doing real reviews but also you get a solid product that i use all the time and basically am needed in order to keep my growing from falling apart so the different glove shapes also lead to kind of different positions of the glove and how much coverage it has in different positions. So we're gonna go over a few of them here. First one we're looking at is obviously the RVH. Now I talked to someone at Warrior discussing this and one of their pros mentioned that they prefer one glove to the other because it covers bore and it feels better in the RVH. For me, I noticed that the G6 feels a bit better in terms of overall coverage just because it feels like the fingers are closer to you whereas when you look at this photo the 6.1 seems like it covers a little bit more especially on the pad itself because of the t and how it kind of flattens out but for me it, it never felt totally natural compared to the six the six just kind of felt like it was kind of going there and the 6.1 if almost felt to me that you're kind of trying to make sure you place it in the right spot. For this position, I definitely preferred the six and you can see a little bit of coverage difference, but it's very minimal overall. And I'm pretty sure it won't be the same way every time because replicating these angles every single time is going to be obviously different. So for me in this position, I like to call it the butterfly blocking position. This is basically the spot that you'll go into if there's traffic in front and you don't know and can't see the puck coming. So you kind of drop, take up as much space as possible. 
In my experience, the 600 brake gloves have done the best for pucks just getting suction into pockets here. The ultrasonic was really good for that and I've noticed it on other 55 degree, 45 degree, 75 degree gloves in the past where basically anything shot kind of hits the palm or just goes directly into the pocket. The pocket position as well as the brake angle kind of lead to the pocket kind of covering more space towards your toe and you can see that a little bit here where the very tip of it kind of goes out further than what the 6.1 does now in my experience with these gloves though i have found that the 6.1 catches here considerably better than i did with the 6. now again this is all obviously my experience and other people might find something differently but even though the 6.1 isn't the shape i generally like in this position i really found that the pocket just ate pucks more than what the 6 did here and i had a lot less puck to bounce off this is a spot where i really notice the finger and kind of the thumb bouncing out more on the six. It's a play where you don't really see the puck coming, so it's hard to squeeze. You kind of just feel it, and then you try to squeeze. So that is a case where I did catch some with those fingers on the six. But overall, the 6.1 did more of a job for me where it just went into the pocket and made the save and covered everything more than I really expected it to be. But as you can see with the shape here, I tried to replicate this in a most natural me dropping down position. You can see where the six kind of leads itself to pointing more towards the toe and covering the toe where the 6.1 kind of leads to be more upright and you obviously want that pocket kind of pointing out a little bit more so you get more coverage but it's not a massively significant difference here but it is something you notice when you're kind of looking at it like this but i really did like the 6.1 here a lot more than i did the 6 which was very surprising finally this is the real reaching position for the glove i feel like this is the one that made the biggest difference for the 6.1 and the 6 in terms of overall shape and just pocket the pocket just feels bigger in this position i just noticed pucks would go into it more it's obviously a reoccurring thing with this maybe it's a bit of optical illusion because of the double t and just because of the cord versus the skate lace but i really did notice when things like this and when i really had to just stick my glove out more things went into the pocket of the 6.1 than the 6 when i was doing the training sessions i got into a groove with the 6.1 where i didn't have to close the glove at all i felt it go right in the pocket and that was it i never really got that with the 6 now again you can get used to things and kind of figure it out get really comfortable with gloves but for me the 6.1 just was an easier transition and i just had more success using it than when i used the six and i tried to use them pretty consistently with each other so they both had about the same amount of skates on them now when actually trapping pucks in your chest like this and like this the interesting thing is i found this one to be much more easier to do than what this one is and i think it's just because of that bigger pocket and kind of overall like more aggressive thumb shape there where this one is flatter. I do find for both of them though, and I talked about how this stuff is kind of feels a little bit bouncy than some others. I find even when doing that chest piece, I do find pucks kind of bounce in here a bit, especially if they don't go straight in the pocket for both of them. I find this one slightly worse than what this one was, but again, I think that's just the bigger palm and bigger pocket on this one that kind of helps with that. But when I did go like this, sometimes I do just kind of just bobble in and it would pop out. This one was definitely better than that one, but it's not the best. And again, I feel like it's just because of how the materials on this are made. They always feel a bit hotter than some other companies do in that sense. While I love how plush this material is and how soft and comfortable it is, how it feels right now, I do feel like it gets too slippery. And I mentioned this previously on Warrior Gloves and on the blocker where this material is really soft and nice to the touch, but when it's wet, it just feels like it slides all over the place and it is just too slippery. And I find my hand kind of slides in here. I kind of wish there was a sure grip material or something in here, or even other companies' gnashes that aren't as kind of soft to the touch definitely feel like they have more grip than what this one does. And I think you'll be able to see this in my 100 puck challenge with this with the puck machine where I keep having to jam the glove in like this to slide my fingers back in because my fingers feel like they slide out all the time. I don't really like doing this super tight because it does feel like it locks this in place but it doesn't feel like it locks this part of my hand in place. And this part of my hand always feels like it's too kind of exposed and not really locked down in any way. You can tighten the fingers a lot down here, but then that part just tightens right here and it's not doing anything for the knuckle itself. So I really find that no matter what I do for strapping on here, it feels like this part of my hand is always super loose. And for an example like this, when I go like this, you can see my fingers can just slide straight out and they're never really in here the way I want it to. And it always feels like they're moving Every time I close, this one definitely feels like it's moving and it's kind of feels like I'm just sliding along the actual material here and coming out. And that's with this tightened and even like as tight as possible, it honestly doesn't help because it feels like it pushes my fingers upwards and it kind of just falls out that way. So this is where I really wish there was a strap that kind of went like down this way. 
or one that kind of went like this to kind of lock this in place. Or even if this little piece was right here and this would go kind of across here or somehow across these knuckles, I feel like it would really lock your hand in place a lot more because right now this is just not supported and I can't ever actually get this piece to feel like it's locked in and I always feel like my hands kind of moving around too much in the glove itself. So a combination of materials and kind of changing strapping I think would go a long, long way for that and to really make it feel like it was more locked down. So even if I try to do something funky like put this strap kind of through this piece right here and leave this one out. When I go like this, this part feels like it's locked in, but this still feels like it's super loose and it, you can kind of see it's not really being held down the way I want it to. So I, I gain a little bit of tightness there, but not there. And then when I go really tight to try to lock this in more, you can't close the glove. So you kind of have a balancing act of like where you want this to be and how a strap can come, kind of come across here. But I really feel like there needs to be, or there should be something slightly different to actually lock these in place. And again, even if this was like up a little higher, so this was kind of up here, kind of going across, maybe it would help a bit more. One thing I did try and I kind of noticed it slightly better is if you untake this piece right here, so this part is totally open and not really connecting to anything, flip this piece over and then attach it to here, you do gain a lot more kind of snugness right here. So it does feel like it's holding that in and it's not really affecting the closure of the glove itself either. So that kind of works with that sense. I still feel like these are too open and not really being like held in by anything, but moving that to there definitely feels like it's locking in my index finger. And since that's generally your strongest kind of fingers right here, it's doing a pretty decent job. So another option you can do, and one I found the most natural for holding your fingers in place is if you kind of go like this. So that way that goes through there. So you get that connection piece and then you also get the fingers kind of connecting to this. So that way you get that piece across there. Doesn't affect closure at all. The only thing is this is that sticky Velcro going right into your skin. So that's not the greatest thing, but you could just tape that side up and be fine. But this is giving me kind of that support across those knuckles that I'm looking for. So it definitely feels like it holds the glove in better. And so maybe with the G7, I'll try that out and put some kind of soft Velcro on the other side just to try to lock it down a little bit better. Overall, both of these gloves are very solid. I really like what Warrior did here offering a 6.1 for both the blocker and the catching glove to give a little bit of a different offering and options for people considering they remove that GT line, which for all intents and purposes, I think is a great idea. I feel like a lot of brands are kind of, their two lines are kind of really close to each other and it feels like there should be more of options to select like softer or stiffer rather than doing two completely separate lines. This is a good case of having these options on the same line. It kind of makes sense. You can get that softer brake pad and stuff like this, but it still gives you these different glove shape and brake angles while also doing it for the blocker as well as differentiating the two instead of doing a release cycle every year, you get two years. Just makes more sense from consumer point of view from that side and I think it's a great move. While these aren't my favorite catching gloves overall and I definitely feel like I would be definitely better if I use them a lot more. So hopefully that'll happen with the G7s but I really feel like these are a pretty solid option. They did a lot of things really good on here. The graphics we didn't jump into because I talked about all my other sets and I went for crazy obviously on here. The G7 customizes out anyway so there's no point jumping in that again but protection on these are solid. The closure is pretty solid. The kind of strapping I think could be a little bit better. The kind of cuff design could be a little bit better, which is being fixed. But overall, you have a pretty solid package on here and a glove that if I like say to people, try this on, see how it feels. If, if you like it, go for it. You are going to get something that you might really like, but the whole package is pretty decent to begin with. So it's not like you're sacrificing a whole lot going this way. If you don't feel like it's falling off your hands, it's going to be great to begin with. You kind of just have to try it on and kind of see if it will work for you. But a lot of times for gloves that are especially easy to close, it's kind of like, well, protection might be lacking a bit. Not the case at all for these, and I'm very, very impressed with that for them. So they deserve a ton of credit for that. Now, the other thing that can't be overstated, and people really love this feature, is the removable palms. I've talked about the, me testing out the actual brake angles and stuff like that, but the palm itself, when it can be removed, you can obviously wash it and clean it and stuff like that. And if you really want to, you can mod it and do your own kind of stitching on stuff like that to change it how you want it, to add more protection or to kind of change things around. So that is obviously something I'm never going to say is a bad thing. I like the sewn in palm feeling more. So the fact that it's still on this one is great. And I do like how for this one, you sew it in so the people like me who like this kind of feeling more can go with that route versus this one. This glove I can easily recommend to people, but again, like most gloves, it's so personal preference. You have to try stuff on to see 
it really works for you and if it's going to be comfortable to you. I definitely can see the benefits of both these lines. I think Warrior did a solid job and I'm looking forward to the G7, seeing some of the changes and we'll compare those compared to these when that comes out. But really happy about these and again, sorry, this video took so long. Apologies on my end and it should have happened a long time ago. So again, my bad. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see me buy a G7, 6.1 or a 6. I'm going to be buying a G7 set to do a video on and to make content on. So let me know when you're looking for more there. Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Links are in the description. If you want me to review specific gear or if these videos are really helpful, please let the company like Warrior, for example, on social media, let them know these videos are helpful and helped you make a purchasing decision. You want to see me do more videos like that. Greatly appreciate it on my end. Gets me on their radar. So hopefully I can review more gear and make more content. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, if you're in Canada, US, check the links in the description to Pure Hockey and Hockey Supremacy. Clicking those links, making a purchase, gives me a kickback so I can keep buying more gear and doing more reviews. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check the links in the description to buy me a coffee. Everything through any of those links always comes back into the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more videos. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.